Hello, hello, and welcome to a brand new adventure into a brand new mod pack. That's right, today, ladies and gentlemen, we begin our adventure into Haven Cave Block Reborn, our brand new take on a stone block style mod pack. So, I hope you are excited and ready. And without further ado, let's dive into another playthrough. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with a brand new mod pack in the 1.20 version of Minecraft. I think 1.21 just doesn't have enough mods really to make any of those mod packs, um, I don't want to say substantial, but you know, really a full, um, nice little playthrough. So we're going to keep up with Minecraft 1.20 until 1.21 um, really pulls through for us with uh, more mods. That being said, I came across this little pack from a pack dev that's actually made, you know, a couple mod packs. And this one seems to be very flushed out, very clean and well put together. So um, it's been a little bit since I've done a cave block or a stone block style mod pack. Um, I think the last one that I personally played was indeed stone block three, which I'm sure we can all agree the stone block series has a special place in our hearts. But... It will be nice to see stone block taken from another perspective now i did also do um ben ben laws caveopolis way way back in the day um so that one was also really nice but it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting to see how uh another person basically has a new take on the cave block uh sort of style so just like most of the new sky block style uh, mod packs this one has the feature where you can press L or slash skyblock create in order to actually create your world to get started with. Because, of course, this is more like a showcase kind of room, just, uh, you know, trying to beautify your little intro experience. And also to remind you, make sure to read the quest. Um, a lot of them in this mod pack have been thoroughly gone through and descriptions have been written, how things work, any, if anything's different. Um, they've truly done a, a really good job of trying to explain things both to expert players or players that are veterans and to new players. So that being said, let's hit our L key. We'll get our little teams menu popped up. We'll say create new team and we want to call this Porkers um, Pals. That works. And then down here when it says template, you can change the uh, starting base location that you actually have here. Now, due to the fact that we've not played this mod pack before, I've not seen anything on the mod pack, I think we should stick with the Haven style as this is kind of the, the starter one, right? But that being said, I have looked through several of these other ones. And they're all really, really cool. I really, um, really like the base setups here because they're all something new. I've never seen these kind of structures before, these kind of starting places. It's... Uh, it's nice. It's a really nice uh, experience. Of course, you have the typical standard old stone block, cave block kind of start here with claustrophobia. Uh, we won't be doing that because we have, and here's Ducky's cozy cave, which I guess th the duck character, the, the rubber ducky is kind of like the, the mascot or the supporting character in this mod. So anyways, without further ado, Haven style, um, we're not going to add visits or join requests really. And let's hit create. Doo -doo. And here we are. Uh, much like most cave block, stone block type adventures. Well, first we want to make sure we come pick up these seeds that will be useful. And, uh, now there should actually be something else that goes with these seeds. <laughs> I know because I've, I've started this up before, obviously. Um, so let's see here. Since... Yeah. So we're supposed to have some of this, some of the spirit. Because I don't think there's really a way until I put in the alchemical processor. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to have the, the essence with it. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let's start a new world. We'll start on a different location, and we'll see if we actually have the essence with this. All right, so we're here. We're creating a new team. We'll call this just Test. Let's go to... Let's just go to the very next one, Ardor's Abandoned Shuttle. 
This kind of reminds me of like, is it Cuboid Outpost or uh, Crash Landing maybe? Has that kind of vibe and feel to it. Oh, this is nice. Oh, this is really nice. Um, and yeah, see here we got two two of the the spirits. We got the tree. I don't think the rest of this really matters, but yeah. Um, honestly, this this is a pretty pretty cool base um, in and of itself. But I think we're still gonna stick with the other one. We just we just didn't get any of the Essentia spirit, so we'll give ourselves some of that to start our playthrough with, and then um, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll keep on keeping on. I do really like this base. Um, but again, it's not really like the original for the mod pack. It's kind of an add-on. Um, that being said, if you if you enjoy this, by all means, give it a give it a go. I think there's there's a little too much customization in this one for my liking. It's it's a really cool starter base, but I like to make my bases my own. And this kind of roughly pushes you in a direction. You could always change directions, obviously, and build out from it, but Still, we're going to stick with the other one. I just uh, just wanted to see about the Essentia spirit. So we should we should have at least one or two or whatever, just something, because you will need this in order to create the farmland to grow your seeds. That's why I was like, I'm pretty sure we need the spirit, because I went through and did, you know, a little 30-minute to an hour play test of the mod pack before starting it up to be like, okay, yeah, this is solid. Um so, that being said, we're going to hop back into the other world. We're going to give ourselves some of this Essentia Spirit. If you spawn into a world and you don't have it, um, just, just give yourself one. No one's going to care, honestly. <laughs> so, let's hop back to there. Alrighty, and we're back to the uh, the OG world. So, let's do what we all know we need to do first and foremost. And no, I'm not talking about punch a tree or even open the quest book. No, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about taking out your bubble wand and giving just a couple 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 good blows there's nothing in life that says that anyone should ever be too good to just you know blow sometimes everyone's got to blow every once in a while it's just a part of life all right and when bubbles are involved well you blow and you blow often anyways um so we start out with this puffer fish a flint knife a bubble blower essentia seeds and essentia spirit you know one way that may solve that problem of it just sort of popping off is to just add this directly into your uh your inventory just like the puffer fish and the flint knife because i'm pretty sure also this rich soil farmland can't be right clicked on by the essentia spirit it has to be normal farmland so they, they kind of give you this farmland but it doesn't work with the seeds that they give you so it, that singular instance is probably the most confusing that i've had throughout this entire mod pack and if that's it like oh man we're we're so good to go because <laughs> that that's nothing you know what i mean being like oh it's it's the wrong farm type that, that's an easy like solution discovery kind of thing um so yes here's the mod pack creator I uh, guess that takes you to their Twitch self promo in my Discord. If you're making videos or streaming this mod pack, please be sure to post it in the self promo channel in my Discord. I'll make sure to put it in the mod pack page if you've got videos. I also love seeing people stream or make videos of my creations. Happy face. Cat face? It's a face. <laughs> oh, goodness. The wall of text about me. Okay, so uh, I make mod packs, mods because it's what I enjoy. Who's in a. Play, blah, blah, blah. I figured I'd just focus on making my mod packs public. Okay. All right, so this is kind of like what um what I've started doing where I'm like, you know what? Let's make a mod pack and let's let's do it. You know, let's just see what it is just so we can add our own experience to this wonderful world of mod, Minecraft modding and mod pack adventuring because honestly, it's, it's given a lot of hours of enjoyment to uh, at least myself personally. So I do feel like adding back into it is... um nice <laughs> anyway so this is a wall of text about her and why she makes uh, maybe it's she he i you know I, I don't know gender types nowadays so like when it, whatever they go by they made a mod pack <laughs> um and it's it's just meant to be a fun little good time so if you're a content creator and using my mod pack mods feel free to contact me i'll advertise you as long as you don't do a one-time stream video unless it's a trailer slash showcase 
Um, so we're going to be doing a full series. We may reach out. That's how you can reach your Discord. This is how you can get to the Forge um, link for the mod pack. And now let's get into getting started. The mod pack um, quest list is pretty robust, but like I said, a lot of it is is gone through in depth. So getting started. This may seem a little overwhelming for people just because there's a lot going on in the first page. Just take it slow and go bit by bit. And, um, you know, I'll be going through it with you here. So if you ever get confused, just uh, come on back for reference. Click me, press L to start. Um, welcome to Cave Block Reborn. The first chapter will start you off by hand holding you through how to use various mods, but eventually let you branch out into various chapters. It is up to you to figure out recipes and learn the mods if you don't know them. So if you don't know them, if you're completely new, you do have to still learn the mods, all right? There's no, there's, it's, they're not gonna literally tell you place block here, place block here. Okay, machine is ready to go. They will tell you what the machines do, which is really useful. And um, a lot of the mods where they, they aren't as specific, it's because that mod has a lot of resources on that subject. So if you ever get confused, whatever, YouTube is honestly your best friend when it comes to mod pack modding with Minecraft, just because there's so much content and there's been so much made on these mods, it's really going to be your best place for tutorials, information, all that kind of stuff. Or just check in with their Discord. Um, they seem like pretty good people. I've not actually checked in with the Discord myself, so the first problem we run into, we'll, uh, you know, we'll test that theory out. <laughs> Anyways, the mod pack is made with new players in mind, but it gets more advanced the further you progress. So this is kind of like a warning. Hey, if you're new, we got, we're keeping you in mind for the beginning. It may get a little fuzzy towards the end, though. If you get stuck, just read the quest. Big, bold letters. If you don't know how to get something, in 99% of the cases, there's a quest explaining it. Check. Give me my 25 XP, please. Um, and now all of the various... Um, setup information so we have jei we know how to use jei if you don't read this section easy travels so this is really nice we can go back to our homes immediately if you want to visit other people's caves or uh, see all cave teams at a glance like th this is nice stuff we're probably not going to be visiting anybody's cave but that's just how it goes the world will generate the following. So within the world, within the caves, we'll have ores, dungeons, oil wells, geodes, treasures, deep, dark, underground villages, molten vents, and much more. So unlike normal cave blocks where it's literally just stone, there's going to be stuff to find in the stone. The end generates as normal with extra structures and dungeons. Nice. In the overworld, you can find layers of the following from bo bottom to top. So basalt will be on the very bottom stone, andesite, uh, diorite, granite, is uh, highlighted in orange. I'm wondering if that's key to say like treasures are on granite lever, le lever? <laughs> level, or maybe that's just a happy coincidence of coloring. Um, and then finally, deep slate up at the top. So that's good to know. Uh, the mod pack is made for you. So I would love to hear your feedback, suggestions, or any issues I can fix. Join my Discord, talk to me and the others playing the mod pack. Critical team information. When you play with others, here's what you need to do. I don't have friends. We're playing alone. Claim chunks. We know how to claim chunks. I'm not going to worry about that. Again, if you don't know how to do any of this, make sure you are reading it. Emergency items. We're going to worry about that for right now. We'll give you a sapling. Um, dirt. Blah, blah, blah. Questing. As explained, the first chapter gets you started. It will get divided into various categories as you progress, and it is up to you to decide what you want to focus on. But there's also an end game chapter you will unlock once you complete the various chapters. Cool. And last but not least, before you begin, it's dangerous to go alone. Take these. A couple of plushies that have, <clears throat> excuse me, EMC value. And then we're on into getting wood. You've read the starting quest, right? Good, now let's start cave block. Time to fist the tree. I mean, use your fist to punch the tree so we can get wood. So standard. And then we have this haven rewards, which you'll notice for a lot of quests, this is the case. Um, and it's just basically a randomly generated reward. So as we move through here, if you just want to check out the quest book a little bit, we have challenges like in a lot of the mod packs where it's just like, hey, go and slay various mobs. 
We have epic challenges, which requires doing special tasks. So this is enchant 50 items or books. This is trade 25 times with villagers. Um, jump 500 times. So just just random challenges, which I think is really interesting because it's not too often that you see like, oh, catch 100 fish. What for? Oh, just, just the sake of doing it. That's that's actually really nice. And then we have the creative haven, creative end game. Just like most mod packs nowadays, the way they reward you is by giving you infinite amounts of stuff. Because what what's what's a better reward than everything for free? <laughs> um, so this is kind of the end goal here, and it does have some sequential recipes. I think the later ones, no, it's still sequential. Is this one also still? Oh, I thought there was extended crafting in this. No, it looks like it's all done with mechanical crafting. Okay, anyways, um, you'll see that it looks like it can get a bit complicated, but obviously as you break this down, this is all one thing just kind of made up a lot of and so on and so forth. So don't let these, don't let looking at these recipes scare you because by the time you get to the point where you're like, hey, you know what, that's something I actually might want to make. Most of this shit's probably going to be automated. So, you know, no, no big deal. No worries, no stresses there. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of get into the rest of this stuff as we, uh, as we move forward. I do like this. This is a good little, um, section to take note of the adventure section minus Ad Astra. Cause that's, that's more like space exploration, but this is going to be a lot of your sort of miscellaneous information bits. So artifacts, you're going to find these just as you explore, um, tools, you know, different various tools you can use for mining, yada, yada, yada. This is a mod I want to touch on because this is going to feel, I won't say confusing, but it's going to feel very familiar and unfamiliar all at once. So this is called the Haven Alchemical Dynasty mod. This mod is like a wrap-up combination of Mystical Agriculture meets um, Project E. It, it literally feels like they, they took both mods and put them into one mod. <laughs> so it's going to feel very similar. Um, you're going to have the fractured alchemy stone and the alchemy stone. These are going to feel kind of like your, your um, philosopher's stone, right? So if we take a look at this here. It can turn gold into iron. It can turn diamond into emeralds, um, iron into enderpearls. So like very spot on, similar to Project E, but there are some new and different twists and turns to it. And so that's why I'm like, you know what, this could be really fun because we have we have someone news interpretation of two very old mods that have seemingly been melded, meshed together. Um, and I'm excited to see what the end result is, what's new, what's different, what's um, limited by all of this, right? This is just basically saying that a transmutation table is in the works. So that's really nice because that is one of the um, cooler parts of Project E, just kind of being able to pull out anything and everything. Um, other stuff, this is just going to help you get familiar with what's um, like miscellaneous, miscellaneously in the pack. So ways to handle your experience, ways to deal with villagers, the fact that you have jetpacks, um, building gadgets, just like everything that you could possibly think that you might have been questionable about. You know, hey, is this in the mod? Is this in the mod pack? You know, so on and so forth. Um, come here in case you're like, oh, I don't know. And then the rest of this stuff, you know, we're going to get into that as we uh, as we get on into it. So getting started, let's punch down this tree finally, right? Good golly, it took us forever. So um, there's FTB Ultimon in this. Hold the hotkey, whatever it may be for you. Punch down a tree and hopefully you get some saplings. Again, if not, you can use the emergency kit that they give you. So we have the oak logs. Let's go ahead and make a crafting table. And we'll just throw this in one of the corners. Let's come back in here. So to obtain pedal, pe pedals, pebbles, you can crouch and right click with your empty hand on dirt or grass. And you'll get a variety of pebbles. So we've seen this mechanic before. We just hold down shift. Oh, that's a... That's a really nice sound. Hold on, give me one minute. Okay. Um, so we also have the ability to sprint or twerk, 
with shift in order to grow trees. You'll notice these three grew up at a pretty much expedited rate here. We're going to break one of these trees and then the other two I'm going to actually save because I want to. I know this is in the mod pack. I want to go ahead and make some sticks and a crook. A crook is a very common way in mod packs for you to be able to get string. So we'll break these leaves here. It also gives you more saplings on return there. I'm not sure if it increases your apple output or not, but um, yeah. So we're just going to hold them on all those until we break it. And what we're looking for here is some silkworms, which we got there. Let's go ahead and make ourselves an axe. I really like this mod as well. Whenever you hover over an item, it's going to pop it up in a zoomed in version over there on the left really really helps for my thumbnail creation because all those images where you see it's like a block or something typically when you see those in um, a thumbnail it's because I've taken that block I've basically placed it down in the world and then I get real up close to it as close as I can and then I take a picture and I cut out all the background environment and then I <laughs> it's, a, it's a complicated process I'm sure there's an easier one maybe um, but then, you know, I have the item and the object to use. We're just going to grow up two trees for this. Um, and we're not reading the quest book right now because I know how a lot of this early progression sort of goes with most of these style packs where it's like you want to punch the trees, you want to get the silkworm, then you want to infest the tree. All right. And then that's going to take a little bit of time to infest all these leaves. And that's how we're going to get our string. So while that's going through... We're going to pop back into the quest book. So we got the getting wood. Um, we're going to hold off on getting rewards for right now until I actually get a chest. We need to obtain at least 32 pebbles of a single kind. So let's pop everything up there while we're waiting on this. Oh. Let's, let's get as many of these pebbles as possible. There we go. Pebbles completed. We completed the saplings quest. Now, the thing with pebbles is, sure, you can get all these granite, stone, diorite, but you can also just mine, you know, if you if you want to. You can make a wooden pickaxe. So you can hover and you can press K to compress them. As you can see here, we got cobblestone. Likewise, you can bring it up here, put it in a four pattern, and get your block um, result out there as well. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a pickaxe. And let's go ahead and make ourselves an axe. And go ahead and make a couple of chests. There we are. Now, the way that I want to do this, I guess it doesn't really matter. Let's just pick a side and stick with it. Let's put that there and that there. We're going to take our crafting bench, and this is going to be important in the future. We're going to take it. We're going to place a piece of wood with it, and it's going to give us this crafting table. A tiny crafting table, uncomfortable and a little embarrassing to use. Can access nearby inventories, can hold items. So... If we put this in here, you'll notice over here on the customization slot, shift for more. Put a chest or storage drawer here to have items stay in the crafting grid, or put a name tag here to access nearby chests. So if I was to take a chest, and um, just a real quick experiment, I place these logs in here, and then I hit E. No logs are on there, and they're back into my inventory. If I place this chest in here, put the logs up there, and hit E, you'll notice the, uh, sorry, the planks stay in there, and uh, so does everything else. So yeah, that's kind of that functionality, and whenever we get a name tag, it'll allow us to access these two chests on either side. So let's go ahead and throw everything in here. Let's get just our axe and our pickaxe. Um, we'll keep the saplings out. We might as well go ahead and get the essence going. Need wood, that. I think the rest of that stuff's probably pretty fun to just stay in there. Yeah, we don't really need it right now. So, um, the way this Essentia Spirit works, you're going to want to get yourself a hoe. We don't have any grass, so it's probably going to be a pretty slow grow rate. But let's just stick to the same side. You're going to want to take your spirit essence, right click it to turn it into the farmland, and then throw your seeds down on it. Hopefully, it doesn't require water to grow, otherwise, I just wasted. Oh, there we go. 
Wow, stuff grows really fast. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's just get a couple pieces. Again, just in case it does break off, we'll at least have some backup for it. All right, and now we'll see if we read on these leaves. It says infested leaves, fully invested, or infested. I'm sure they're not invested. You know, they're not stockbrokers, right? Okay, so we broke that with the, uh, what's it called? And it did not give us anything. That's cool. That's fun. That's fine. May have to do this again. Get a crook. There we go. So, we got some string. Normally you'll get some more silkworms back from it. And normally you'll get more string if you actually get, <laughs> get all the leaves chopped there. But it's fine. That was my bad. Let's take a silkworm. We'll re-infest some leaves. Now let's hop back into our quest books real quick. Because, yeah, we have a lot more rewards here to go through. Saplings and crafting table. So we're making some good progress. Um, down here, you'll notice this is where the crook and the silkworm and the string all come in. So, like, this is explained in the quest book. And this is why I say some things may be a little confusing. Because you don't exactly come from this first branching line and then go straight into here. You can, but you'll need to get the crook in order to get the silkworm to get back around to the string. So just, you know, kind of keep that in mind that these separate modules do have starting points that aren't necessarily branching from the main one. So over here, you'll see the unfired porcelain crucible. This is a starting point for this little quest line section. So hopefully that makes sense. There's also crafting on a stick. So we're going to go ahead and get that setup maybe i don't know because i really i really do like the fact that you can access the chest and getting the uh the name tags really not that difficult so let's wait for that to fully infest there while we do that leaves and all that are going to be important but we're also going to need a barrel and a crucible so let's go ahead and make those if i have enough wood do i have any in here i do not so let's do this and then is it like that for a crucible? That? That? <laughs> there we go. Third time's the charm. So there's crucibles. I'm going to go ahead and make two of them just because it makes it um, a bit easier. And then as far as barrels go, let me see how I can make these real quick. So it's going to be these X Diorum. I don't know how to say that. We're going to need planks and one slab. So let's do this, that. Boop, boop, and bam. Now, the crucible and the barrel are going to be very useful and helpful to us. So let's place one, two, and three. And then in the quest book there, it told us that wooden shears are a thing. So in order to get wooden shear shears, you just take two planks, separate them out. And of course, if you didn't know this, you could also just look them up over here. Wooden shears. There they are. And if you hover over it and press R, it's going to tell you you just need two planks. So, there we are. Um, are these fully fully infested? Let's break all that. We got a lot more string from using our crook that time. And let's break this. Now, we're going to need to get some food going here. Luckily, we are surrounded by stone. So, let's just choose a direction. Let's say this one. Let's start mining out a little bit. Just enough to get ourselves a furnace so we can actually cook some food up here for ourselves. And uh, I've not got a base design really in mind yet, so while we're still kind of working on that, we're going to try and stick pretty... I don't know how to say this. Like, just try to, try to be accurate with our building, you know? Try to be conscien conscientious. Is, is that how that's said um anyways you can cook the silkworms and eat them you can also eat the pebbles the pebbles is going to give you a little bit of hunger um debuff so what i actually recommend is doing something kind of like this you take the pebbles and you fill your food bar up just like this very slowly all right you're gonna have all this hunger and whatnot this is should drop you back down at least one here in just a minute, and then you'll use the cooked silkworm to kind of cap it off. 
Anyways, let's get some more trees going here because we're gonna, of course, need more wood. Am I sprinting? I am sprinting. View bobbing isn't on. That's that's why I can't really tell. Anyways, if we want to get ourselves um, a name tag so we can really make full use of the crafting table abilities there, we actually can, and it's not even that difficult of a task, task excuse me, to do here. So let's get all of our rewards there. And this is a good, um, actually, a little test example. So make sure if you're looking to, like, use an item and you're like, well, you know, normally to get a name tag, you got to go through a whole process. You got to find some. It's always a good test measure. Just look up the item and see what, you know, if the crafting recipe has been changed. So in the case of the name tag here, you'll see, oh, wow, it has. We just need paper and string. So how do we get uh, paper? Because we've already got string. <laughs> <laughs> um, that can be obtained by using bark, which, if you'll read in the orange there, obtained by stripping logs. So we need three pieces of paper, which means we're going to need three of these barks. I believe you get one bark from each piece of wood, so we're going to need nine pieces all day. And if you right-click it, you'll see the bark pop off there. So let's go ahead and get all the bark that we need. Let's smash this wood back down. Whoa. There we go. And now let's go ahead and craft the paper and get ourselves a name tag. Now, if we take this chest out of here of the customization slot and I put the name tag, voila, access to all the chests. I believe we can even search. So pebble. Oh no, that's to name it. Oh, interesting. We don't need to name it. I can I can look and see what's in there. But yeah, now we have crafting using this stuff over here. I can hover it and pull it in. Boom. Use it just like normal. And you can also deposit directly to the chest. So it's nice. It's a it's a nifty little feature that um, you definitely shouldn't overlook. And like I said, it's going to give you access to your chest here. So pulling for crafting, you should be able to use this. Let's see real quick. Um... Okay, so we have twigs here, and I know that they can craft into sticks. So if I hit this, it did pull it over. If I hit this and hit shift, it pulled over everything from the container. So yeah, pretty much exactly how you would want that feature and function to work is uh, exactly how it does. All right, let's pick up a couple of these miscellaneous items around here, throw down a couple more trees. And now what we're going to need to do is use these wooden shears to smack off some leaves. Let's get some going here. Any second, this tree wants to grow up. Okay. Um, and let's actually just go ahead and make some more wooden shears here. So that way we have plenty, plenty, plenty of leaves. And that's what, 64. Let's do another set. Those and that. Cool. And we'll break the trees back down. Make sure you have enough saplings if you're destroying your leaves that uh, you're going to have some left to plant. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take some leaves, throw it into the crucible, throw it into this crucible. And if you want extra dirt, you can throw it into the barrel. And this will be how you get dirt. So the crucibles will generate water, as you can see on the top little um, indicator there. It's slowly but surely turning the leaves into water. And the barrel will give you dirt which we don't really need but it is something that's like hey this is part of the first little bit and if you started in a different world maybe one where you don't have so much um, readily accessible dirt then this is how you would actually expand your farm and uh, sort of build on it now these oak crucibles are going to need quite a few leaves so every once in a while just come back over here and give them a little right click see if you can put anything in there just keep on chopping down trees because of course we're going to need a ton of wood eventually this will be automated i'm sure there's always wood automation in any good mod pack right right anyways all right so now we got a, a little bit underway we have quite a few quests here let's see this chest is completely empty let's go ahead and claim all of our rewards so if you're like me and you've been just knocking stuff out and you're like oh man i have quite a few rewards you can come up here, click on the diamond, and it's going to give you everything. 
So we got 12 emerald ore, some quartz dust, a warp stone. That's pretty good. A clutch, gold nugget, cod roll, phantom membrane, kelp roll, feral flare lantern. That's pretty good, actually. Rich soil and a sea lantern. So they all are all randomized. Sometimes you're going to get better stuff. Sometimes you're going to get more stuff. I like the feral flare lantern because this is going to place invisible lights all around your base. It's going to light, literally light it up. Any any portion that's slightly dark, it's going to go ahead and place some invisible lighting there. Which means technically we could get rid of all these glowstone lanterns and still have light. But uh, we'll, we'll leave it for the time being. Well, let's get to choppy choppy. And again, just because I know we'll probably need a fair amount of wood for whatever we're trying to do here in the near future. Boom, bam. And let's come back to this. Okay, so white wool, we can get that from our string. The market, I believe it's going to take us a little bit because we're going to have to get some red dye here, which, yeah, that one may be a little tricky, finicky kind of thing. But, uh... We'll figure it out. Apparently you can smelt lead nuggets to get red dye. That's interesting. I don't know if there's any validity in that or if that's just them being like, hey, you can do this. We do at least need to make a crafting table on a stick, I suppose. So that way we can get that checked off. Crafting table, stick. And there is curio slot for this. You can throw it over here. Set up a key bond. Ours is set to V. I think it's naturally set to B. Or V, I mean. Uh, but yeah, open crafting on a stick. And if you'll see, I press V. There it is. So this is good for crafting on the go. This is good for crafting with an inventory. All right. Um, let's get our little silkworm here. Yummy. Gave us basically no food there, but that's all right. All right. So to move on forward, this is saying we're going to need to get some more stone. That's fun. That won't be really an issue. There are hammers to crush stuff with. That's good to see. Cobblestone into a furnace. And that gets us into create, which is going to be nice. But let's focus on getting some clay. I think in order to get clay, we're going to need to put some water and some dust in here. So in order to get dust, we are going to need a hammer, which doesn't show up over here. But we know it because the pack here shows us. Crushers break down blocks into their lesser forms. Cobble into gravel, gravel into sand, sand into dust. Netherrack into crushed netherrack, and endstone into crushed endstone. Can only be used on the blocks listed above. So don't try to use it with anything else or try any funny business. It won't work. Down here, we're going to see by the crucible, we can also make wooden buckets. So this is going to be useful in the beginning because obviously we don't have access to iron. But we're going to need to move the water out of these two crucibles. So... The reason I went ahead and made two crucibles, by the way, because I don't know if you saw that, but each crucible has um, one bucket's worth. Of course, you need two buckets in Minecraft to make an infinite source, so just do yourselves a favor. I'm going to break this, this, and that one. And let's get, oh, sorry. Another, is it this one? That one. Okay. A little bucket here, and ba bam Alright, so that's the water checked off. We have the barrel over there. Now all we need to do is take some water, put it in the barrel, break some stone. We actually already have some zinc ore here, which is really nice to see. Oh, it's saying actually that we need iron in order to break that. So we're going to have to hold off on clearing that out for just a little bit here. That's fine. Iron usually comes pretty early on. I also, I hear some mobs already very nearby. Alright, so let's see here. A lot of stuff in our inventory we need to kind of deal with. And so I shall, so I shall. Alright, that's all of our sort of random blocks that we've gotten from Quest as well as leaves and string, I guess, because why not? Um, so yeah, now we're going to need to make ourselves a crusher. Let's just look at the stone crusher. Okay, so this is very reminiscent of everything from before. Let's get some sticks. Let's go one, two, three. One, two. There's our crusher. And apparently I'm just going to throw everything on the ground today. 
Because, <clears throat> I mean, honestly, why not, you know? There's 8, and then that'll be 16. Boom. I wonder, is there compressed versions? Can you do this in a compressed sense? There are compressed versions. So let's see, compressed gravel. Okay, that doesn't work. That's fine, it's good to know, good to know. <laughs> All right, let's take eight of these gravel bits. Let's smash it down to stone. There's sand. Let's take four of the sand and we'll turn it into dust. There we are. Boom, bam. And then if we come on over to the barrel that we have water in and we just give it a little right click. There we go, we got clay, hey, hey, hey. Now, clay is going to be used in conjunction with, that's not over there, down here. Clay is going to be used in conjunction with bone mill in order to get ourselves the porcelain clay ball. So let's see. Bone mill, bone mill, bone mill. We can get it from bones, obviously. Duh. Uh, we can also get it from calcite. And we can get it from the market. Oh, sifting recipe. You can also get it from sifting dust. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get into this sifter or not quite yet, because we're going to have to have a shaft, andesite. We don't have any andesite. We don't have any iron nuggets. We don't have zinc. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? An all-new recipe where you can just take some andesite and some cobblestone. How do you make andesite, nether quartz, or just andesite pebbles? Right, of course. Of course, of course. Okay, so we actually, we might be able to do this then. Let's see here. Um... Andesite. We have three andesite pebbles. Well, well, I was going to go ahead and tell you, I don't think that's going to be enough. Throw everything into here. Let's get this, that, some of that, and that. Um, and then, yeah, let's just get some pebbles going. be good for a while i like the little counter down there on the right it's like kind of a quick little glimpse way of knowing what you got all right so let's see andesite we're at 34 gives us at least a little bit to play with here now to make this was it cobblestone it was it was it is it always has been and always will be. Let's get some more cobblestone here. You can vein mine, but just be careful when you're vein mining in the beginning around your base. It's gonna it's gonna make it look sloppy. All right, just word from the wise. It's gonna make it look a little sloppy. So let's split this. Let's split that. Andesite alloy, and now we can get into create. Now, I wonder. Okay. <clears throat> so, Cogwheel just takes a shaft and a plank. Now, for the quest here. Oh, we're not even into that. Because we don't have furnace yet. Uh, I think there is an option in F2B quest, I may be wrong about this, that basically allows you to complete a quest even if the dependents before it aren't completed, or at least check. You can't, I don't think you can actually accept the rewards, but you can check for it. Um, that would be kind of nice, I will say that. Unless I'm wrong and that feature doesn't actually exist. But there's the furnace. Uh, we'll need to make ourselves some more andesite alloy. So we have four... Let's see, how much can I make with this? Oh, fuck. I think just two, right? That's the way that math works. Four divided by two is indeed two. <laughs> All right. Let's just do this for a minute. And if you need to expedite this process, um, if you have a macro set up, you can do that. Or 
You can also just put something heavy on your mouse and kind of walk away. <laughs> We're almost there, though, so no big deal. No big deal, Lucille. Combine all those together. Might as well go and combine our stone bits. And then, yeah, let's just get two more of these alloys to complete this quest. And then it wants you to go up into the water wheel and the andesite casings and encased fan. Okay. So while that's doing that, we also have cobblestone generators in this, but we're going to need the crucible for that. So I think we're going to go down towards the sifter. The sifter is your first step to getting resources easily and steadily before venturing into more advanced machinery. Usage. Use the sifter to process blocks from the crusher. Gravel, sand, dust, crushed netherrack, and crushed endstone. Different meshes will yield various, <clears throat> excuse me, various amounts and types of resources. Automation. Automate the sifter using pipes, chests, and other basic machinery. Set up pipes to transport materials to and from the sifter, connecting it to chests for storage. This setup will be your first setup into automating resources, into automating resource collection. Excuse me. Additionally, the millstone can perform the same function as the crusher, breaking down blocks into their lesser forms. Integrate it into your automation system to further streamline your resource processing. Start your automation journey with the sifter and the millstone for efficient and steady resource collection. So, this is going to be an objective of ours, and then of course it requires a cog wheel as well. So let's go ahead and just get ourselves cog wheel check. Let's go ahead and get ourselves an andesite casing. We're going to need two for that quest specifically. The way you can get casing is by placing down logs, stripping those logs, and then taking some of your andesite alloy and right-clicking it on. All right, there's that. So now all we need to do is just make the sifter, right? Because that's we have all that stuff, I think. Let's see. Sifter. Craft. Indeed. Wonderful. So, now that we have the sifter, we're going to need to get a string mesh. And this is where having the string from earlier is going to come into play. So, let's go string. Boom. And that's good to go. Now, let's see how we actually upgrade these into an andesite mesh. Okay, so just surround it with andesite alloy. Well, what does this give us first before I go upgrading? So typically, gravel is going to be your sort of entry point. So it's going to give us 10% chance at iron dust, copper, zinc, 1% chance at dust or at a diamond. If we upgrade this, what are we looking at? We're looking at similar materials, but now we have a 35% chance for iron, 7% chance for diamond. So yeah, we should, we should definitely just go ahead and upgrade this mesh into an andesite mesh, given it's so easy block of brass that's going to be a little more difficult so we'll have to hold off on the brass upgrade and then what comes after that advanced brass wow of course of course <laughs> all right so let's work on getting this andesite mesh so we're going to need eight of the andesite alloy we have two that's going to make us two more so we really just need four oh, uh, oh right we only have three in there all right well let's store the rest of these pebbles Actually, you know what? It's a better idea, I think, to take the pebbles into your inventory. Because then you can kind of sort them how you need them, right? Alright, so let's get um, a couple more andesite pebbles here. I really like the sound effect for this. I don't know what that actual sound effect, like what, what's being used there. But I do really, really enjoy that. The doop 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 doop. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop. Okay. I was about to say, I hadn't actually checked volume, so I may have to quieten it down. Oh, yeah, that's something I didn't really think about. Everything is at 20%, though, so maybe it'll be okay. That's not typically how I'll set up my sounds, but I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. How much andesite are we sitting at on 33? Gives us eight pieces. That might be enough. Might be enough. Let's see. Six. Yeah, it's going to be just enough. Right on. All right, so let's take our string mesh. We're going to take our andesite alloy. We're going to throw it around, and there we go. Now let's take our sifter, place it down, place the mesh in it, and 
get some gravel. Now for this, I'm assuming, I think that might be loaded, but you'll see it has this sort of cog wheel down here. So what you're going to want to do is get yourself a crank that has a crank wheel. So we're going to need a cog wheel and a hand crank. So we'll need another piece of andesite alloy here. Uh, right, I got just enough last time. <laughs> And a site, and a site, and some cobble. And if I press V real quick, we can make this hand crank. And of course, we can go and make the cog wheel. Um, and then, so another way, there's two ways to do this. You can put the cog wheel down, put the hand crank on the top, and spin. Might be the wrong direction. Maybe that's not how it works. You have to shift click it on. Or maybe you gotta throw it on. Yeah. So throw it in there and then oh, oh my goodness, that is really cool. <laughs> so you have this method where you can put the cog wheel down, put the hand crank on it, or alternatively, break both these pieces. You can combine them, get a hand crank. And do it this way. I prefer this. I don't know why. It just kind of looks better. Anyway, so we're going to crush down this um, gravel here. I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> How many pieces do we have? We have? One more. Okay. So from that, we managed to get quite a few things here. We got some iron dust, some zinc nuggets, aluminum, um, copper. I probably should have checked all this out before I pulled it out. Mini coal, you raw uranium, uranite. Wow, that's that's early for that. Uranium nugget, some flint, some nickel dust, and maybe something else. But my inventory's a little jumbled right now. Oh my goodness, my food. I'm dying. I'm dying. <laughs> oh shoot! Quick save. Um, let's just. Let's just eat some pebbles. You wanna you wanna just eat a couple rocks together? <clears throat> Excuse me. My voice is going out in this. I don't know if you can tell. I, I tend to talk a lot. Both on here and off of here. Alright, so that was uh that was really cool. I really like this the sifter there. Oh we have slowness, that's why. Okay. So let's take a look back into the quest book. We got all that done. We got our resource generation done. We can now get into iron, I think, it, maybe. Iron dust. Yeah, there we go. Got our first piece of iron. That's a really good feeling in any mod pack. I promise. I promise. Um, so yeah, then we just need to get some bone mill, which I think we get from sifting dust. So let's take the wee bit of dust we have, and we can even take this sand and break it on down as well. Dump everything up top here. A crusher. And boom. All right. Q to throw it in. Or I guess later you can use a dropper or hopper. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so cool. Here, a witch is somewhere nearby. So there's, there's got to be some kind of open cave system very close by. In fact, I wonder. So we got one piece of bone mill out of that. How, how, how much bone mill do I need? <laughs> a one to one ratio. Uh, so we're gonna need seven. Okay, so we're gonna need. Good, Decent little bit more of that. That's fine. Let's throw all this over here. Lead. Okay, so that's how you can actually get some red dye, right? Lead. Smelt it down. Smelt it down. Oh. I don't think we have inventory tweaks. Is that... Well, well that's working. That's weird. So some things it's letting me scroll to take out of my inventory. Some things it's not... Just something to take note on. That's all the way filled up. Yeah, red dye. 
cool. So if we take some string, boom. I don't know if we need the wool. Yep, we did. Red da. And then let's see about how we make this market place. Market. It's just wood and the wool. Okay. So yeah, make sure you have the right chest selected. It's not going to pull from all chests. It's only going to pull from the selected chest. That's still pretty good, though. And let's throw our market guy right here. Oh, you come up out of the ground now. Okay. The major potato. Oh. Why would you want to buy NSI alloy for a diamond? Does it really seem worth it? Maybe in the future, I guess. Anyways, here you go, ladies and gents. This is going to be a whole lot of um, items that you can buy that are going to be really useful. Different seeds, which honestly we should probably try and get into sooner rather than later. Right? A bone mill. Now, it says we need emeralds. We haven't happened to have gotten emeralds from anything. Well, we got two emerald ore there. I do suppose we could break it down, try and get something. Some kind of food starter seeds just to get us going, you know what I mean? So we're not, like, starving constantly. There's carrots and potatoes and some beetroots. You know what? Let's do that. Let's take one of these pieces of emerald. Fuck, I'm going to need an iron pickaxe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I guess that piece of emerald is just going to stay there for a minute. We don't happen to have... How do, how do you get emerald, actually? Like, naturally. How do you get emerald? Emeralds. This stuff. Emerald dust, okay, which comes from sifting gravel. At a grandiose rate of 1%? No, andesite. 5%. Still not fantastic. That's okay, though. So, um, we've got all that done. Let's see here. That's good to go. Let's automate our sifter. That, that's something that we can do fairly simply, and it's going to be a huge benefit, so we're not having to stand there and uh, just solidly right-click it for however long, right? So let's see. We're going to take some... Well, I guess we're going to need some more andesite. How, how do you make andesite again? Is there a andesite? No, we don't have the quartz quite yet. All right. Although you do get this from sifting, right? Should. Sifting soul sand. Ah. Okay. All right. Well, let's get a couple more bits of andesite then. And then we'll make ourselves a water wheel so we can actually get the the machine turning and burning, so to speak. Mm, I think maybe... I don't think we really need this much, but I'm just trying to hit an even number here, so we'll get six pieces of andesite. Get some cobble, and we will combine, combine, combine. Actually, you know what? I don't even think we needed to do that. Yeah, because we have shafts right here. You big silly goose. All right, so let's type in water wheel. And for this specifically, sure, you the big one is always going to be better, just so we're all clear. But let's go ahead and make the small one because it's needed for a quest. All right. And then maybe let's go ahead and make the large one too. Let's see. Small one surrounded by wood. There we go. Um, now, I think what I'm going to do is just sort of knock this. Also, it says we have hammers in the pack, right? Stone hammer. Hammers are powerful tools that break three by three, making mining and excavation much faster. Do not use Ultimon with it. <laughs> um, so we're going to have to smelt some stone down if we want that. Let's just go ahead and get some rocking and rolling. There's some stone. There's some fuel for you, stone. All right, let's break, break, break. We're going to need this whole little back area. We're going to need some water. We have infinite of that, though. We'll need a couple more cogs. That shouldn't be too difficult either. Okay, so let's go one, two, three. We'll put it right here. 
I think something tells me we're going to need a little bit more room than just this little three height ceiling. So let's uh, see what we can manage and muster up with that. Now, if we happen to break into that cave where there's uh, infinite enemies, obviously that'll be pretty bad for us. So we're just going to hope, wait, and pray. And then throw that right there. Yeah, it, it kind of goes into the ground on the up and the down. Let's break this. There's that feral flare lantern lighting our world back up. All right, now let's see how this water wheel works, or looks, rather. Okay, so that's that's fitting nicely. Now, just as the name implies, we're just going to need to run some water over the top of it and then down. So I think the best way to do that is going to be like this. And then I just need to get up here and place a piece of water directly above... See, don't be above me. Don't be above me. Don't be above me. <laughs> I need to place water like there, right? Somewhere. Like right there, I think. Oh, but it has to run across the top. Let's see here. All right. There's all that. For the sake of not wanting to flood my base, let's just get something placed up in here so I can test this easily. Where's my bucket? It does have a low durability. That's kind of cool that this bucket has a durability to it, though. All right, so if I do that, it is going down the right way. I think that's right. Or do I want to... I want to place it, like... No, no, no. Like there. Does that do any better? I can't really tell. I don't have the goggles on me. Either which way, you see it's spinning. <laughs> so we have our large water wheel. We're going to use this rotational force to spin our sifter. So that way we don't have to manually use hands to do it. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a couple of cog wheels here. Um, now can you... No, oh, not like that. Can you change directions with small cogs, or is it only large cogs that you can change directions with? Looking like it's only going to be large cogs. Alright, so let's get some large cogs then. And how do you make that? Just adding a piece of wood to these? Yeah. But now we do that. And if we should be able to look down. Because you can do it up, see? So we just want to do it down, 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 down. Why is this not working? Oh, is the is the sifter in the way? Just break that for a second. There we go. Okay. Now we should be able to place the sifter there. And voila. Automation. Okay. So just to showcase this real quick. Let's do... And, and we're absolutely sure I can't break down compressed blocks. I know I just watched gravel not work with it, but... Um, okay, let's see. Stone crusher. No. Truly does not work. Okay, that's fine. Just, you know, to double check. All right, in that instance, let's build ourselves a wand, which we probably would be doing this anyways. Build ourselves a wand. Let's get some stone. And just build it out here. Then we can take our stone crusher and crush it. Here, sifter, throw the whole thing in at once, and voila! Automatic sifting. Automatic resource generation, really. 
B E A U T full. And we already are getting some emerald dust in there, which is also beautiful, right? And uh, yeah, I think that's actually going to be a pretty nifty and nice little place for us to wrap this first episode up in. We got started into the mod pack. We got some automation going, specifically ore automation, which is, I mean, really kind of the, the number one thing when it when we're talking about uh, modded Minecraft. I am going to try and go a little bit slower in this series so we can actually do it together. That being said, I may work on the base in between episodes, that kind of stuff, but I'll try not to get too much or too far into any of the mods too quickly um, or too complex. So... That being said, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for having watched the video all the way through. Please do show your support to the Mod Pack Dev if you end up playing it, and be kind when you do it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I do hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Um, be sure to leave a like down below if you did enjoy the video. Comment down in the comment section if you have any tips, tricks, pieces of advice, or questions that I may be able to assist with. Of course, subscribe if you're new here. You want to see more awesome content from yours truly. And as per the usual, share this out with friends, family, strangers down the street, and random people you might meet. I do hope you all stay safe, stay awesome, and stay crafting. Until next time, you beautiful, beautiful people. Peace out.